All right, so uh, let's talk a bit about uh, post-production, what that means. So we talked about the discovery session, the creative process um, with, with the client or the, or the end product. Um, but now post-production is really about getting to that final, the final draft, right? And what's involved in post-production and how do you guys deal with it? Um, there's a lot involved there. Um, for me, the first thing tends to be is just to comb through everything that's been shot. So if there's three hours worth of video, uh, I'm going to be watching that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, taking out the selects or the best content, strongest content out of there. Mm. Uh, then on top of that is the you know, editing it down to whatever the final product is going to be, getting it closer to that uh, final length um, in, in a rough way, of course, yeah. and then uh, cleaning it up, doing color correcting, uh, audio tweaks, uh, if there's any, you know, anything that needs to be cleaned up there. If we're in a room that maybe had too much reverb, uh, hopefully not this room. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's amazing what we've come across in, in post-production that we, we didn't think it was going to be a big issue, but then it turned out to be a bigger issue when we listened to it or when we watched it again. And then that is hours of your work to, to fix it and correct it, right? So. Exactly. The, the, the other thing to it, though, is that what we shoot tends to be like, it, it's shot with the intention of post-production most of the time. So yeah. um, what comes directly out of the camera is not what the, cl the client will see in their yeah, yeah. Mm. product, um, which, which is important to be understood, I think. Well, we do that intentionally, right? We, we don't give the raw version to the client until it's mm. been cleaned up, almost ready to, to deliver, right? Right, and I, I feel like the first comment, especially if we're shooting in uh, you know, an S-log color profile or something like that, is that, why does this look so flat? You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we did that on purpose, because <laughs> yeah. it's going to be easier to add the colors back in in post, uh, something exactly. like that, for example. Yeah. And it just gives us a lot more latitude and, and, and you know, ability to get those blacks really black and the, and the whites just right, you know, so you're not blowing out stuff and you're not uh, crunching stuff on the other end. So, yeah, it's so important. And again, a lot, so much of successful post-production really depends on, on all that planning before. And, and like Brad, you were saying, it reminded me of that time uh, we were at that uh, uh, in, uh, I guess, Takashimaya, and we were trying to find the right spot to shoot. And there was all these vents from the, the air. We were up on the top of this, the roof Very there. Very hard to find a spot. It, it, it was just, yeah, and we were running around trying to find the right spot. And then eventually we were kind of just doing a, guerrilla shooting, you know, within the mall just to avoid those loud vents outside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it takes, yeah. and, and that's what, um, mm. yeah, you, you appreciate in post, right? Because it was, you know, yeah. you, you don't want to have these loud noises, and it's impossible to edit out some of those, yeah. It really is, and it's literally impossible because you can't, you just can't, you know, they're just going to be there, and, 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 and that comes back to that audio quality, the importance of sound, yeah. again, you know, so... When you get in the post, like you say, um, you know it's you. You could you can make it look really pretty and beautiful, but if the sound is crap, well, you know. Well, that's what we you know. putting together the whole package. That's the, that's the hard yeah. part, I think. I think the other thing too is that a lot of people don't appreciate, uh, you know, in in the process of making movies. You know, a lot of stuff is that you know they'll do um, you know dialogue replacement because. On, on site and location, there is a lot of noise in the background and, and pretty much any time you watch a movie, it's all been, uh, you know, all the dialogue's been replaced, all the sound effects and everything from footsteps and all of that have been added in because they need to have that perfect. So when it goes up on the movie screen, you believe that you're listening to it the way it was recorded on the set, but actually it was never recorded like that on the set. And, you know, we're not quite making, you know, movies in that in that sense, but we have to take consideration, you know, take the the, the importance of these sounds, in, in you know. So when we get into post, we're you know we don't have to call the client and say, ah, we have a problem with the audio. <laughs> it didn't have. It wasn't exactly uh, what we anticipated. And as 
in my case, since I'm often present for the video shoots and for the post-production editing, you know, I, I'm, I'm always thinking ahead, like, mm. how can I minimize the work that yeah, I need yeah. to do Definitely, yeah. later? You know, how can I make this as easy as possible for me once I get it onto my computer, you know? And I think with photography as well, right? I mean, there, there must be like the post-production, like the raw photographs versus the, the retouched photographs. I mean, not Photoshopped, right? But more like the color grading and those kind of things. Right, yeah. I mean, I always shoot in raw. Right. Uh, not in JPEG. So, of course, I'll offer or deliver in JPEG, but I'll shoot in raw. So that means I'm, again, shooting on a very flat basis as well so that I have more leeway in post-production. Um, you know, in general, people kind of have the idea, oh, you took a photograph, so you'll have it pretty soon for me. You know, because that was always the image of what you A photograph comes from a camera. Um, they don't realize that post-production is a really, really important part of the process, especially now in the digital age. Yeah. So the post-production can be a ratio in terms of shooting to post-production can be a one to five, a one to ten in terms of hours or days, depending on what you're talking about, because it can take up a lot of time. And the number of photographs or the number yeah. of files. Or and, you know, when I say to people... Um, you know, when we're going to take a picture today, there's two processes here. Taking the picture, and then after you're gone, making the picture. Yeah. It's a take and a make process. Yeah. And they don't really, yeah. really realize that the making process is really where the time is spent. Right. Where actually the money is, the cost is going up. Hmm. So that's always a problem to get people to understand and understand that point. And especially with people and people's faces. I need to spend a lot of time to get them perfectly right. Right. Again, if it was a still image or you know a nice scenery thing or a building, they would never complain. But the people will complain. Mm. You know, that's the first thing. Or some of these husband or wife or friend will say, "You look terrible in that photograph." So nobody will ever say that about a building. You know. Yeah. So you ha in, in terms of what I do, a lot of the time, that's the kind of uh, where the time is is gone to make sure it's, it's looking really, really good. But educating the end user to the fact that the post-production is going to take a lot of time and it will take, uh, you know, it takes money as well, budget, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I, I think there's some, sometimes there's a kind of mentality that if you're spending a lot of time in post-production, it's because, the, because you didn't do something right during production, which is not the case. Like, that's a, it's a natural step that happens. Even before digital uh, mm -hmm. cameras, mm -hmm. you know, you mm -hmm. took... You took your film into a dark room, and you know you dodge and burn uh, oh. in the in the dark room, and you're doing those same those processes that you do in uh, in Photoshop, for example. And yeah. uh, it's 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 just a you know an evolution of that. It's mm -hmm. still part of the photograph process or the video process. That's something that naturally happens. It's it's not right out of the camera and into your hands and yeah, it's done. And just see it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what I, it's hard with us uh, because a lot of times people want to see like the recording after we, <laughs> which is not possible. Or when you have, yes, yeah. or when, like maybe it's happened to you, Dermot, where you've had, a, you know, after every photo you take, oh, can I see that one? Can I see that one? How does that look? Uh, like yes. they want to see. I actually did have a, another computer and that was a monitor hooked up to right, show right, the live right. shoot. But after a while, I started to give up that because people were going and spending more time the minute the shot was taken to look to the monitor to see what right, it looks right, like right. and then telling me how they wanted to be photographed. <laughs> uh, you know, so I decided not to give them that access. I'll show them the back of the camera on occasions just to let them know things are going well. Look at this photo is looking good. You know, have a look at it. But, I, you know, it's just to give them a sense of what it, what mm -hmm. it is. But they're always... Uh, very excited to see the final production when it comes of some days later. And they're always you know, sending me emails. Oh, look, at I'm really waiting to see that picture. When, when can I see it? You know? So there's a lot of excitement about seeing the end product, just like there would be in videos too. What's it going to be really like when it's all put together? Well, and, and hopefully, I mean, that, that's our biggest challenge is, is making the, the end user or the client or the, you know, the person paying for, for that, like happy with the content that we've produced, right? But hopefully understand <laughs> what's been involved with that, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think yeah. going back to the post-production, I think we often see that, or I'm also seeing that a lot more as like, how can we shoot it this way to think about how to reduce or, you know, streamline the, the post-production process, right? Um, yeah, and then it goes, also goes back to pre-production as well, right? So, mm. yeah, people don't realize uh, what's involved with the, with the shoot, I think, uh, until they're actually doing it, right? So.